in Addis Ababa, remember he plays for St. George, and the Ethiopian League was annulled uh, over coronavirus pandemic that has engulfed the global uh, world sport included, and therefore he can't play, he trains in isolation, and of course, let's speak to Matasi himself, of course, he's played locally for several clubs, Poster Rangers, FC Leopard, Tasca, and now overseas with St. George. Patrick Matasi, good afternoon, good to speak to you, man. VP, are you safe? Uko salama? Lama. Ah, salama how is the life, how is the life in, Ethiopia in Ethiopia in isolation? In isolation? You are used to playing football, playing, training with friends, with friends, with, you know, teammates. Now that coronavirus pandemic is here with us, people are in quarantine, people are in isolation. How is it like? How is the experience? I know it's boring, but what do you make of that kind of lifestyle? Ah, my friend, it's now like uh, three months. It's so much boring because, uh, okay, Mele, we played our last match uh, March around 10, 10th. Up to now, my friend, we have not played any match or training. So I'm just in the house. It's so much boring, but what shall we do? We have just to take the precautions because uh, it's not easy. You know. It is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talk to us about Ethiopian League. How has been the experience in terms of acclimatizing to the new league uh, coming from Kenyan Premier League setup? joining mm -hmm. overseas with St. George, Ethiopia. I remember before the league was annulled, it was started on the log. How is the experience like? Have you acclimatized to, you know, the new environment, a new setup? Yeah, right now things are okay because if you compare my first season here in Ethiopia, it was somehow difficult in terms of uh, settling here. Uh, yes. If I can remember the first time when I came here, we were, we were living in uh, in clubhouse. So things were not okay because we used to to eat what is there, you know, in terms of meals and uh, movement. But uh, the second season was from uh, October last year. Uh, we were given a house. So now the life is good. I've uh, glamorized well and uh, things are okay because uh, right now I can make my own food and uh, enjoy the life in the house now. I remember interviewing you some time back when you were playing for the Poster Rangers and you indicated that you are very positive, very ambitious of playing overseas. Do you think that, you know, your dream is on the verge of being true now that you are in Ethiopian League and probably looking forward spreading your wings a little bit further to other nations as well overseas? Yeah, if I can remember, it was uh, February uh, yes. 2018 huh? when we yeah. did an interview with you. So... Uh, I had an ambition of uh, playing uh, professional football. So if you look at the way my my uh, graph has uh, risen from uh, uh, 2011 when I started playing up to now, for me I can say it's a positive thing because uh, I was looking forward to play professional football and now, right now I'm here. So I'm still going on and uh, my ambitions are too high, you know. Wow, that's good to hear. Before I forget, I know you are missing back home in Kenya and your family. Mm -hmm. How is it like, you know, staying away from your family, I understand you also have a four-year-old month uh, in mm. terms of communication. Has it been very easy trying to get in touch with your family back home in Kenya? Yeah, that's the only thing I have to do in terms of uh, talking to my family. You know, my son is now five months and uh, every time I talk to them, you know, we do a video call. Uh, every time I see him, every day growing uh, uh, and body changes every time you know so for me that's the only way i can uh, communicate to them through video but now i can't see them because of this uh, virus but i'm looking forward for the president uh, to come up and uh, uh, at least uh, give us some days like three four five days so that we can fly back home and be with our families you know? but it's not easy over here it's not over easy it's not easy over mm -hmm. there of course we shall be looking forward to see whether that comes to pass probably Mm. On June 6th, after, after uh, you know, the cessation of movement of people in and outside Nairobi, probably there will be good news of him opening up so that you can travel to check on your family. Let's talk football now. In terms of the comparison and contrast, Ethiopian League and Kenyan Premier League, how is the situation? Kenyan Premier League, Kenyan Premier League is more of uh, physique, you know, uh, Kenyans, you know, physically <laughs> uh, in terms of running, uh, we don't, we don't, uh, if you look at the preseason of uh, Kenyan teams, it's more of running and uh, power play. But in Ethiopia, is of uh, uh, 
ball moves fast, you know. Tact tactics are too high. So here in Ethiopia, people love playing football. You know, it was not easy for me to cope with, with it, but because when I came from Kenya, we used to play power play football. But right now, um, here in Ethiopia, it's more tactics, you know. So if you compare with the Kenyan league, it's a bit different. You know? Kenyans is more physique. So we are strong in Kenya and we love uh, moving uh, in the field in terms of running. But here in Ethiopia, they want the ball to move very fast, you know. Back home, Kenya, Football Kenya Federation President Nick Mwendwa suspended the league indefinitely. Therefore, Gormaya were declared champions because of coronavirus pandemic, a situation that has also been seen overseas. But in Ethiopia, it was annulled, which means there will be no champion, there will be no promotion and relegation. Before that annulment, you were sitting third on the log, St. George. Probably, do you think uh, your efforts are wasted? And your dream of probably helping your team win the league is gone into a waste? You know, everything happens. And when uh, you make a decision, there is always positive and negative side of it, you know. Uh, for example, here in Ethiopia, uh, this season, the second leg we had played only two matches. And uh, the number one and number two, we were facing them at home. In fact, the next two matches, we were facing them at home. So we were... We were looking forward. If we could have won that uh, two matches, we go back to we go back on top, you know. So for me, I can say that uh, uh, here the league was annulled, and uh, it was a good decision, yes, because of the healthy uh, and the health of uh, fans and the uh, players. And also the negative side is that you know I, we were we, we were looking forward to win the trophy because Zenit has gone for two seasons without winning a trophy, you know. So we, we were looking forward to winning the trophy. But for me, what I can say is, uh, you know, uh, what the Federation did was they, they made a, a questionnaire, then they, they sent them to the 16 teams. After that, uh, every team came up with uh, what they were thinking of about the league, you know. After collecting the, uh, the information from all the teams, they came up and then they said, okay, if this, this is what the teams have decided, then you have just to, to nullify the team. No winner, no relegation, no representative in uh, half competitions. So for me, I think uh, uh, if you look at the way the virus was spreading, uh, it was a good decision in terms of uh, fans and players. Because it's, it's, it's just a matter of time, you know, like four or five months, and then we come back to the field. So why, why should they risk the life of uh, fans and players? So for me, I think they did a very good decision. Let the assignment in Egypt during African Cup of Nations, where Kenya, the national team Arambe Stars, participated, getting eliminated at the group stage, but they managed to beat Tanzania and losing to two teams at the group, at the pool stage, that managed to lock horns against each other in the final. That is Senegal and Algeria. So, how was the experience like, especially saving that penalty from Sadio Mane? And, you know, being the East African, to save a penalty spot kick from a Champions League winner when you are playing against Senegal? Uh, I don't know if you followed my interview with uh, Ken Okaka in uh, in France, in Paris, when we were in pre-season uh, pre there, before we went to Egypt. Yes. Uh, he asked me about the penalty saves I've been making in terms of uh, when I'm in the field. So I told him, ah, no problem, one day uh, maybe Senegal can get a penalty, and then Mane can take it. So what if I <laughs> save it? Mane you predicted been... this. Yeah, so man has been a uh, uh, Champions League winner. So it was uh, a good gesture for me in terms of uh, saving that penalty. Because you see, uh, Mane had come from uh, uh, winning the Champions League. And when he came to Egypt, uh, I went through uh, YouTube and then I saw the other players clapping for him, you know. So when uh, when they got the penalty, uh, I said, oh, no problem. This one can be one of the penalties that I've, I've been saving. And definitely I did it. So for me, as a player, it was a plus. And in fact, uh, I was very happy in terms of saving that penalty. You know. From a Champions League winner, it was not easy. Yeah. You are very happy saving a penalty from Sadio Mane. But in terms of general yeah, experience, I know the field. outside this world, despite the fact that you lost that particular game by 3-0, I was watching and where I was watching from, you know, Kenyans were very jubilant of you. But in terms of you, 
uh, the continental exposure, has it been of much impact to you, career-wise? It is. If you look at the way I've been uh, playing in national team since 2017 uh, March, when I played my first match uh, in Machakos, the friendly against Uganda, uh, it has been of a uh, good curve in terms of improvement. So every time I play for national team, there is an improvement because uh, it was my first time to play uh, Sekafa. We won the Sekafa yeah. Senior Challenge. And then uh, after that, we went to Africa Cup of Nations, you know. It was a good curve in terms of experience and uh, being the first time, you know, it was not easy for all of us because nobody had played that uh, big big stage. So it was a good experience uh, uh, for all the players and the technical bench and all the Kenyans so that we know what to do there. If we can just put our heads together and uh, try to put things into a good preparation, early preparation, and then I think we can play the next AFCON, which... Uh, for me, I think it will be a good experience because we have already tested that uh, Africa Cup of Nations. So that experience is, is there, and that's why it's, it's, I'm here. It's helping me too much in playing here in Ethiopia, Ethiopian League. So a few questions coming in. Of course, some guitar. I don't know whether it's, it's Kenyatta University. Along Thika Road is asking uh, your career high, your lowest moment since you started playing football. Another one here, Tom Ochel from Langata, asking about about the clarifications of you know uh, financial embezzlement by federation during african cup of nations of course it is something that has been talked about locally victor wanyama the captain you are his assistant also spoke put things into clarification we've also spoken to president of fkf but those are the questions you will be tackling as we continue first of all respond to some guitar who wants to know your career high and the lowest moment since you started playing football First of all, what, what are you proud of since you started playing football? The highest moment of your career? Uh, winning the Golden Glove twice, and then uh, Kenyan Premier League, in fact, Golden Gloves twice, and then winning the Golden Glove, uh, the Kafasina Challenge, and play of the tournament. And then also uh, taking the nation to Africa Cup of Nations. That's one of my best moments of my career. Then moment, the moment, I know lowest moment, low somebody never want to say them, but you see, for the sake of the, the viewer, Tom Ochel, you will have to respond, your career low. Uh, it came when we were playing against uh, Tasca in City Stadium. That was uh, Go TV. When I was in FC Leopards, you know, I was almost giving up uh, in terms of playing soccer, you know. Uh, after serving the the FC Leopards fraternity, yes. uh, we were playing again against Tasca, the Go TV. They were leading 2 0, you know. So immediately yes. they started chanting Matasi must go, you know. Uh, but <laughs> we came we came back and we won that game, you know. And uh, I, I I gave one of the assists. In fact, it was, it was not an assist, but it was an own goal, you know, from one of the uh, from one of from one of the Tasca players. So uh, after the game, you know, uh, I was very low in terms of uh, how the fans talked to me. You know, they were chanting Matasi must score at halftime. When I went to the dressing room, I just uh, changed and then I gave out the, the uniform to kit manager of FC Leopard telling them, I'm not going back to the field, you know, second half. But uh, through Martin Musalia, he told me, my friend, let's go back to the field and we play. But uh, finally won that game. But, uh, you know, I had not even cried when I was playing my, uh, in FC Levers. But that time, my friend, it was one of my lowest moments. But it happens. That's why I'm here. I'm strong. You know? It is what it is. I've been following about your career. Joseph Aura from Mumias is saying that he thought the lowest moment of Patrick Matasi is... is I, I thought the lowest moment of Patrick Matasi is that blunder that costed Kenya while playing against Ghana in qualification and DRC Congo in friendly. I don't know. It seems people have been passionate about your career. Uh, you rem do you remember that? Ah, I do. I do remember. Yes. How was it like? Uh, for me, I can say uh, every goalkeeper, my friend, you know, uh, we are the last ones to make sure that yes. the ball doesn't go past us. But uh, what I can say is that there are so many goalkeepers in the world. I normally follow them. But sometimes, you know, uh, you can have a good match. But the other day, 
we, we don't have a good match. But only what I can say is uh, those are some of the moments that normally happens in the field, you know. And that, those are some of the learning curves for me. When I make this mistake, and then next time I have to to change it, you know. So for me, that's not uh, my bad moments in the field, you know. Look, look like. And but when they were playing first five minutes, uh, he made a mistake, a, a long term injury, you see. Then he went away for around around three, four months. But he came back and played. Yeah. That, by the way, having watched European football, even World Cup, several high profile goalkeepers have made mistakes, the likes of Ika Casillas at Real Madrid, Gianluigi Buffon at Juventus, David De Gea at Man United. And talking about these greatest custodians that have graced, you know, world football, whom do you draw inspiration from? Who is your mentor, goalkeeping wise? Uh... I was I was following Man City goalkeeper uh, before he moved away, Joe Hart, uh, at that yes. time. And then uh, um, when he moved from Man City, his career uh, somehow came down huh, in terms of uh, playing. Went to Burnley. When, when, yeah, when when no, he went to Lon Lon where Porto or where some. He went. Uh, I, I can't remember, but he left City uh, for a middle table club. Yes. Yeah, so you yeah, yeah. following so, up his career. Then what happened? Yeah, and then uh, after after that coach came in, the uh, Pev, uh, when he came to Man City, you know things changed. So I had to change and shift my uh, role model to somebody else who is a, a big foot, you know, the England goalkeeper. Because if you look at the way he normally play uh, in terms of uh, uh, positioning, long kick, communication, his endurance, you know, they say the goalkeepers are crazy, but we are not crazy, you know. <laughs> so I, I was trying to follow what he normally do in the field, but uh, I've been I've been following them him and uh, Ederson, the Man City goalkeeper. You know, every time uh, I, wo I when I'm watching the game, I always observe what they are doing in the field. So for me, I don't have a specific one, but I watch every goalkeeper what he does, and uh, at the end of the the game, what I see. Uh, helped his team to come up with a win or lose or a draw, you know. Of course, talking about Jordan Pickford, he's the goalkeeper for the team I support England, also known as Three Lions, and he did exceptionally well during World Cup, helping England to get to the semi-final stage of World Cup in Russia, getting eliminated by Croatia. So I think I and you read from the same script over that. Now let's speak, let's get to the political part of, you know, football. I was reading some article, uh, penned by my good friend Timoth Olobulu of Capital FM and uh, I think your journey in football and the people you appreciate, you quoted Jan Coops at FC Leopards, he gave you a chance, he believed in you and also you gave a lot of credit to the current president Nick Mwendwa for you know helping you, believing in you. I don't know, starting with Jan Coops, what did he do? You know, uh, for me, it has not been uh, an easy journey, you know. Uh, Dan Coops just came in, but I think he's the one who gave me uh, that opportunity or chance to play a Kenyan Premier League. I had played the uh, NSL in West Kenya, but uh, I always uh, celebrate uh, Pani Livungo, the, the man who came home and took me from my world. And he gave me that chance to play with the when I was in uh, West Kenya after my high school. But uh, after uh, that NSL season uh, in West Kenya, when I signed for FC Leopard in 2011, yes. I was in FC Leopard uh, for six six months without playing. I was only changing training. You know? uh, that time I was working with uh, Aga Yazande, the, now, now the current uh, goalkeeper trainer of Tasca. He was telling me, uh, my friend, you have a future. Just keep on working and time will come. You know? And uh, that time, FC Leopards game and changed the management in terms of coaching, coaching staff. So uh, Azesh was uh, told to quit, and then they brought in um, Mohamed Fire. So that time, uh, where the coach was Jan Coops, uh, and goalkeeper trainer was Fire. So we were just uh, making the warm up in the before the game, 
against Costa Rangers in Nyayo National Stadium, and it was under pressure. So uh, immediately my fellow goalkeeper, Chema, got an injury, and then I was given that chance. After playing that game, uh, we drew nil-nil. Next game, we beat Sofapaka. Next game, we went to Tanzania for a friendly match. When we came back, uh, Coop said, uh, I'm now the number one goalkeeper of FC Lepers, you know. So for me, uh, Jan Coops believed in me, you know. If uh, he couldn't believe in me, they could have just said, after uh, Tiema was uh, okay, after the injury, he could come up back and play. So for me, uh, Jan Coops played a very big role in terms of uh, my career, coming from uh, NSL, still a young boy, you know, to play uh, Kenyan Premier League in terms of a uh, big uh, league in Kenya. So I celebrate him because he's the one who made yes. me to be where I am. How about for what has he done for you? Uh, you know, I've been in national team since uh, 2011, you know. Yes. Uh, 2011, I've been going to national team, I train. Uh, after the squad is out, I'm out, I go back home. But for me, I can say, uh, Nick Mwenwa, uh under his uh, leadership in terms of uh, FKF president, you know, they have done a lot to the players in terms of supporting talents, you know. And... Uh, I normally say under his uh, leadership, that's why I played for national team because most of the time when the coach uh, uh, come up with the squad, you know, I'm there. But uh, Nick management, for me, they have tried uh, in terms of uh, making sure that the Kenyan players are having good uh, environment in terms of coaching, in terms of allowances in terms of uh, logistics you know in terms of uh, equipment for me i can say it, it it's better if you compare with the, that time uh, when i started going to national team you know? so uh, if uh, for me i can say under his regime that's why i'm here you know and and talking positive of him of course it might raise suspicion uh, mm -hmm. during national team selection of players do you agree with those that were saying that probably the squad get compromised based on merit? Especially just before African Cup of Nations in Egypt, there were people who believed that there are those names that deserved getting included, but they didn't get an opportunity and they were omitted. Do you think there is compromise in terms of selection criteria of Arambe stars? Now that you are an assistant captain and you can speak uh, from that aspect of seniority in the team. <laughs> My brother, I want to tell you something, huh? Yes. When, even if it's me, I'm the coach of the national team, I'll have my own principles as the coach. I'll say, uh, if I take Matasi to be my goalkeeper, I, I know that he can do this for the team. And then, maybe there's another goalkeeper who has different qualities than mine, you know? So, if the coach is making decision in terms of selections, we are not there, you know. We don't know why he picked this player and then he left the other player. Because every player has his own strong point and weak point, you know. So uh, if the coach has made the decision of uh, he wants you to be in, this, in the team, then he leave me out. So there is no need oh, this coach, uh, there is a biasness in the team. No, you know. For example, if it's me, I'm good in aerial ball, I'm good in communication, I'm good in this and this. There is another goalkeeper who is good in uh, communication, yes, but aerial ball is not good, you know, in terms of distribution, you know. Every player has his own quality and, and, and strong point. So that's why when you see the coach making the selections, they always, uh, based on, on, on the quality of the player, weak point and the strongest point, strong point of the player. So for me, I can say it's the work of the coach. Even if it's me, when I'm the coach, I look for those things, you know. I just, I just, I can't just wake up and come up with a squad without knowing what I'm going to do, you know. All right. So, Tom Ojela had asked some question over, you know, reports of financial impropriety uh, during African Cup of Nations in Egypt. 244 million had been allocated for the national team and deputy president also, of course, part of. 
uh, the money that he had given to the national team. And Victor Wanyama spoke to Madgo TV and he said that 12 million went to FKF for administrative purposes, then 38 for, you know, playing unit. But it seems like there is dissenting opinion in the playing unit in the playing unit because Abu, Abu Domar, the left back, had also spoken something contrary to what Wanyama is saying. Put things into perspective. What happened? Uh, what the captain said, uh, yes. it was true. Uh, before the money came, eh, the, the team manager, the coaching staff, and uh, the FKF uh, officials, they sat down and then they said, we want this, 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 and this, and this, and this to happen in terms of finance, you know. For me, I can say that, uh, you know, uh, even if it's a, a club, even here in St. George, uh, we won, uh, we won uh, a trophy. But we can't say that we, we have to take the whole money in terms of uh, sharing, you know. There is that percent that went to the team and there is that percent that came to playing staff. So when, when that money came, they said, uh, uh, in terms of logistics, uh, this, they, they said uh, this money will go to uh, logistic purposes and then this money will go to players. And that's what we agreed on, you know. So for me, I can say that the bonuses that uh, the Federation gave the players, you know, in terms of uh, preparation, in terms of uh, bonuses uh, when we are going to AFCON, they did their best because uh, sharing that money uh, to players and uh, in terms of logistics, for me, I think they did the best thing. Uh, even if uh, I've been given, for me, let's let's say, for example, I, I got, uh, I was the best player for Sekafa, or let me just say Kenyan Premier League uh, Golden Glove winner. There is money that we are we were given. My friend, I can't take that money. Then I just go with it home. I run to my, to my, to my rural home, do my own things there. And then I come back. And then I expect things to be the same in the team. It can't happen. So what I did, I, I took a percent of that money. I gave to my poster, uh, players and, and technical bench, you know. Why? Just to say thank you, you know, for what you did to me. That's why I got this award. It was not mine. It was for the team. So that unity should be there. For, so about the money that uh, the captain talked about, yeah, that, that's, that's what uh, we agreed as uh, the, the players and the, the technical bench plus the uh, federation bosses. No. All right. So uh, thanks for putting things into perspective. Now, where are you heading to after your stint? in Ethiopian Premier League with St. George. Are you looking forward to seeing yourself overseas with another equally high-profile club? Uh, right now, I'm still under contract with St. George, you know. Uh, yes. And uh, if, there is a, if there is any any offer that is coming up, I can't just rush to make a decision. They have to follow the right channel, as in they have to follow the the right channel, they contact St. George because I still have one season with them. Yeah. Uh, and if my contract has elapsed, then uh, there is somebody who wants to work with me. Uh, for me, I have no problem. I'll have to sit down with them. If they come up with a good offer, then I'll have to go. If St. George is giving me a more offer than that team, then I'll have to stay because right now, I'm now used to the environment of uh, Ethiopia in terms of movement, playing, you know, I'm now coping up with the environment. So, but if there is any, uh, anybody who is coming up with a good offer, uh, I'll have just to go, you know. When you brought on your, your, your thoughts and opinion with regard to state of African football. We've seen, you know, some clubs uh, winning CAF Champions League, CAF Confederations time and again, you know, the likes of Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs in South Africa, which have dominated the Sperons of Tunisia, Lahili in Egypt. Do you think African football is getting to some level? It's growing. Yeah, for me, for me, the fo uh, football uh, in Africa is somehow growing because if you compare the the competition right now, is very high. You know, 
it's not about uh, North Africa teams that uh, uh, always uh, win the uh, calf matches or calf uh, trophies. If you look at the competition right now, there's no big team, no big nation. You know, it can be a small team, small nation, but different players. You know, players are there to handle the ball. How much, no, no matter how mu how much or how old is the nation in terms of football. You know, so for me, I think uh, uh, African football is now growing to good direction. Africa is growing and getting to another level of course it's a pleasure speaking to you patrick matasi as we wind up maybe uh, your message to the upcoming crop of footballers what do you tell them what should they do i know discipline is key humility as well but in terms of ensuring that they get to another level career wise uh, in terms of playing football what's your words of advice to them uh, for me what i can say is that uh, uh, no matter how hard you are working just pray, continue pushing, you know. You never know when and what time it will come. Because you can work hard today, but it won't pay tomorrow. But after one month, it will pay. So uh, never give up. For me, I've been working very hard, you know. And finally it came, now it's now paying. So what I can tell the young players is that just work hard, do extra. Don't just wait for the coach to give you uh, what he has and then you go home. If you go home, try to, to do something else in terms of what's my weakness, what's my strong point. If I have this weakness, then work with work on it while you are home. You know, so uh, just be disciplined, you know, hard work, self endurance, and then pray. Then always be ambitious on what you want. Yeah. Also, yesterday, uh, Nick Monda speaking on one of the local TV stations, and I remember interviewing him during, you know, his campaign. So when he wanted to get elected the president uh, prior to 2016, he said that you know his intention was to help the national team secure qualification to World Cup. You know, that's a global uh, showpiece that comes with fanfare, one of the most prestigious, actually the most prestigious global competition. And he says that Kenya. Arambe Stars, come what may, it will play in Qatar come 2022 World Cup. Are you of the same view? And are you hoping being there now that you've indicated that you, you, you are prayerful? Of course, God is paramount and is key. He helps us so much. He gives us health. Are you looking forward to being there also, being in the national team, in case the team qualifies? <laughs> my, uh, my brother, that's a very big stage, eh? Worldwide. Yes. So, yes. I think uh, uh, for me, I've, I've tested the Africa of Nation. Uh, I think uh, if we just plan very well, 2021, we have to play again after Cup of Nations. Then after that, we still have a chance to play a uh, World Cup, you know. And that's why I said everything happens with a reason. If we plan very well and we, we do it uh, in good time, I think we still have that, uh, that time we have to play in Qatar, you know, because we have that wow. qualities in Kenya. Uh, yes. Always a pleasure speaking to you this afternoon, Patrick Matasi. Say hi to the guy in the background and, <laughs> and of course, keep self, continue uh, training and keeping fit and ensuring that, you know, you follow the laid down uh, protocols put in place by WHO uh, to ensure that we combat this pandemic. Of course, we shall overcome. Isn't it the case? It is. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, that has been part. Matasi, goalkeeper for the national team, Arambe Stars, speaking to us exclusively this particular afternoon via Zoom live from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Of course, he plays for St. George, a team that participates in Ethiopian League. Remember, their league was annulled over coronavirus pandemic. They were still third on the log, and Matasi was very optimistic that he will help his team, you know, secure the title crown. But of course, looking forward to blistering performance going forward. That brings us to the end of our interview with the custodian for the national team, Patrick Matas. We're going to take a short break. Then up next, we're coming with another interesting conversation revolving around sports fitness and nutrition, you know, considering that this is the time for coronavirus pandemic. Players are isolated, just like Matasi, in their rooms, no training, no mingling with teammates, and they have to get proper hygiene if they have to keep fit going forward. I've seen the uh, uh, medical physiotherapist Felix Okur already in studio alongside Charles Nderangu, who is the nutrition expert. They will be putting things into perspective for us. Don't go away. Stay tuned. It is the touchline.